What's it like driving a dead person around the place? Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> in a hearse, we have um, it's called the shoot the guns passengers. Like where the where the coffin bear is, so you've got behind the passenger seat, you've got a little seat, then the coffin's next to you on the right, and then just to the right of that again is another seat. You're called the shoot the gun. And when I first got in there, my mate on the on the on the coffin like. <laughs> I thought the fellow was still alive in the box. <laughs> I didn't half panic, you know. One time I was going out at Christmas time with funeral directors. You can have a choice of dressing the deceased in, in their own clothes. Okay. And um, I was going out at Christmas time, so I took me suit in to go out at Christmas time in the night. And when I got back after the funeral, they'd actually put my suit on a body in this chapel. So this fellow's laid out, laid out in my suit. In your good Marks and Spencer suit that your auntie bought you? The family were absolutely over the moon because they said, what a marvellous suit that is, isn't it? <laughs> you know, we never had a suit like that all the time he was alive. <laughs> Thanks, but you are a really good, you know, undertakers, and you even dress them. And I noticed from the invoice, you didn't even charge us for the suit. New money. Tell me about this new money. Critics would say it isn't new money. It's old money that wasn't spent before. It's potentially future taxation, which wouldn't be new money. Tell me where the new money's coming from. We obviously, when it comes to capital spend, have announced first three point nine billion two years ago uh, and today the money the 1.8 billion pound that's been announced 850 million pounds obviously covers the 20 hospital upgrades another billion pounds covering capital spend that might be ct scanners projects across the country on a variety of different smaller uh, schemes now yep some of the trusts you know have begun to budget and put aside uh, money to be able to cover for these schemes that needed to be um, implemented and what we've been able to do today is the treasury have been able to put their hands in the coffers and to say, actually, you know, here's the money centrally rather than it being delivered. So hold on. Locally. So what, what you are saying there is that the trusts do know that they need to look out for this money in order for these different financial implementations to take place. So I've got a I've got a press release here from the prime minister saying it's all it's all new money. That that would well, suggest it, it's not new it money. Is. Yes, talking to my mother-in-law, she slapped John Lennon across the face. What? You've literally spoken to me for the nigh on sort of eight or nine minutes and we've talked about Brexit and Boris uh, and the American Congress and the Good Friday Agreement and you didn't start with my mother-in-law slapped John Lennon across the face. She did. They were in a nightclub in Liverpool and John Lennon said to her, I'm going to have you out of that dress before the night's over with. And she said, you... Oh, I not, and slapped him. <laughs> she also smacked Silla Black in the nose as well, apparently. So what? What? Yes, I, and by the way, let me let me make it very clear: we don't incite any sort of violence. But I need to oh, know no, no. why. How is your mother-in-law punched Silla Black in the nose? Silla Black was working as the clock room attendant. Was at the cabin club. She made some comment to uh, the wife's mother, and she smacked her in the nose. Which I'm I'm not sure is why Silla Black sang like she did <laughs> surprise surprise my mother-in-law yeah, has punched you between the eyes that's the one well she has two claims to fame she spends a lot of time in Liverpool doesn't she John well she did then she doesn't live there now she doesn't she anymore there it is, so. Mo Salah was the last one to come out of the training ground as soon as I saw the car the same with my brother Isaac and we both ran like as fast as we ever could I think that's the fastest I've ever run <laughs> and in the excitement of myself, I um, looked to the left of me, and that's where my Sarah's car was, because I was on the pavement. Then, without <laughs> seeing, the lamppost was in front of me, and I ran into it, and then I hit my nose, and I bounced off it. <laughs> my Sarah came driving over, and we was not expecting it one bit. My brother, like, he wasn't injured. He was, like, jumping up and down. He was so happy. He, he actually bursted out into tears um, because of like just the feeling of meeting Mo Salah and even though I was still kind of spaced out <laughs> I um, still still known that it was Mo Salah and I was really happy Has it taught you some lessons boys? Yeah What are those lessons? In front of you when you're running Louis I've heard that the, that the lamppost is still sore as well Yeah the lamppost yeah I think still- we're friends now, me and the lampers. I'd been out on a night out, I went home and uh, then I hear like a very faint, a little knock and I'm like, do I hear something? I mute the TV, a couple of minutes later again, sure enough, a little quiet. And then I wait five minutes and it happens again. So I walk to the back door and I wait and I'm standing by the back door and I'm waiting and waiting and then sure enough, there it is, a few minutes later, a little knock. I'm like, wow, there's somebody on the other side of the door in the pitch black late at night 
knocking every five minutes very, very quietly, which is bizarre. So I say, who is it? They say, John. I'm like, John who? They're like, John. I'm like, I don't know a John, but it's John. So I open the door, straight in the face of like CS gas. There's a guy stood there, black boots, black pants, black bomber jacket, and a black Ku Klux Klan, Klan hood over his head with a can of petrol, swinging petrol all over the place, all over me, all over the kitchen. So He's, you had to defend yourself. He was trying yourself. to burn me. Yeah, no, I ended up chasing the guy out of the place. Yeah. The cops came down. He'd been in my house earlier that day, disconnected my phone line, so when I tried to call the police, uh, I wouldn't be able to.